Welcome back to Classic Car Cave. Okay? So in this video it's going to be on the track movie, at uh, track movie, track mini. Uh, so I'm going to do a spanner up from front to back, just check everything and then I'll white mark it so that we can check it on the day that we're up there. So far everything's looking pretty good. As you can see all the wheels are off. They're down at uh, Gummy Gressel which is our local tyre place and they're fitting the new uh, Nankings on it and taking off the Yokohamas. In fact, I have to go down in half an hour and pick them all up. But I just want to double check everything, um, uh, particularly on the front here. So, going through the car, I'll put this on so you can see. So you can see there's quite uh, quite a few changes here. Um, obviously, it's on gas shocks. Uh, it's got double uh, double pot pistons. These are from Mini Sport. Uh, and as you can see, the discs are vented, or well, they're vented and slotted. You can see on the side, on the back there, on the back side. Um, the only real big difference, because this is a carbon fibre front, um, we've obviously had to put these rose. I put these rose joints on here, and we put these special connections on them so that with the, when you twist the whole bar here, uh, I'll bring this around so you can see. It and you can see there's another rose joint at the top. So you can twist that bar and bring the sub subframe tighter or looser or whatever you want to do. Um, and everything on this is pretty much adjustable. Um, I'll just bring this around a bit so you can see. You can see it's all it's all adjustable. Um, obviously, it's got ready. It's got a fan as well as the main uh, as well as the main fan on the the mechanical fan on the engine itself. Um, so basically, just going around the whole thing. Uh, and there you can see this is those pipes that we use. These are just um, PVC fittings for toilets or ducting, but it seems to work quite well. Pretty happy with it. And then I, I built them through the car. So going down, I think I already talked about how we use these for the jack, the jack stands. You can see they don't actually touch there, but they're good there. This is unusual. Um, I've put box section right through the car and heavily mounted it before I put the outer sill on. And basically what happens is here is, is a, a box section goes inside that and you can use an over center jack. It's got small wheels on it, which will lift one side of the car up so you can change two wheels at the same time. Um, or it's got another piece on it where you can put it into a hydraulic jack and lift it. So you can do both because obviously if you did it on dirt, the wheels are not going to turn as easy as they would on tarmac or on, on a solid floor, concrete floor. So I made both. Again, this is the upright for the roll cage on the back. Obviously, there it is inside. And then again on here, you've got adjustable uh, for the radius arms. You've got adjustability on the radius arms. Uh, this has got high-low suspension on it. This is another piece of kit you might not be aware of. Um, this is basically an anti-roll bar for the rear. Uh, but this is a 5 8 bar, so this is not for road use, this is only for track use, it's too stiff for road use. And basically what this will do is, as we're going around the corner, it will stop the droop in the radius arm and uh, lose contact, the wheel will lose contact with the track. So you can slide the Mini basically into the corner, so you've got half the amount of traction. So you've only got it on the wheel that you're dipping into, whether it be left or right. Um, again, on the back here, this is, I'll, sh I'll put the, I've got a long hex bar that goes in the back here um, and you can adjust it while it's on its wheels because you, what you don't want to be doing is lifting it up and down all the time and possibly losing it, taking it out of these uh, on the, the, the rubbers or the cones on the, on the suspension. If you, uh, in some situations, um, if it's fairly new, um, if you take that shock absorber off, it will drop down, so you've got to be very careful there. Uh, obviously, these are Miglia arches, and you can see it's, it's not that well cut out, but I mean, it's a track car. Um, and the only downside with these is, obviously, I have to undo these two bolts here to take the front off, because they're in the A-frame, which is metal, and the rest is all carbon. I'll take it around the front here. Um, these are just the clips for coming off the front. There's uh, three stabilizers on this. There's one here, another one here, and obviously the one on the top of the engine. 
Um, yeah, as I said, everything's adjustable. You can see there, suspension, everything. And basically down this size, it's, it's almost the same thing. You're looking at the same thing. The only difference there, in fact, I'll bring that, excuse me, I'll bring that to light round here, you can see it. Uh, the only difference here, obviously, as you can see, is that, um, that wok or that uh, housing for the clutch is, is got holes in it to, not really to lighten, it's more to, it's more to get the heat out of there than anything else. And you might also see uh, up there there's, uh, there's the uh, dry decking, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll bring the car down and I'll, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. So just quickly going underneath, as I said, you can see all the stabilizers. You can see obviously the rod, it connects in a different way because we've got the gear shifter, which would normally sit under here, would normally sit here, actually inside and it shifts very quickly that way. Straight through exhaust, it's a reverse megaphone, it's called. Um, so, yeah, and there you go, and this is KAD, but you can see it's all, it's all solid. It's got a race tank in the back. And that's really about it. It's got 113 horsepower at the wheels. So if you take into consideration the losses, it's probably a good 125 at the crank, because there's quite a bit of losses through the differential, drive shafts and what have you. So yeah, it's a, for an A-series engine, which is only a 1310cc, it's not 1380. And the reason I didn't go for 1380 was, you know, once you get to that, that bigger bore, if you have a problem or you have a porous block or, or a crack in the block, you, you're, you're screwed. You've got to find another block. And me being so far away from the UK, I didn't want to take that chance. So I thought I'll keep it at 1300, but it's 1310 in actual fact. Um, but it's got a very high lift cam in it. But I'll bring it down and I'll show you uh, some, some stuff inside they might be interested in. Uh, obviously this is a 45 DCO Weber, um, there's a, a King fuel filter there, this is the catch tank obviously from the, from the rocker, this is the dry decking system we talked, I talked about before, and what this does, this allows you, what normally happens with the Mini is, is from, because the thermostat's this end, one and two get, well one gets the it's the coolest and then second coolest, third coolest and fourth coolest and the end one can get really hot, the number four, because it can't force the water around because it's coming from the thermostat and obviously there's a water barrier so in this case it's coming from the block and it has to go all the way through so it's a, so it's a circuit so it has to go through it all and that's why that's done here you can see there's also an oil cooler system in it as well and this system here allows it to get up to temperature because it's not good for it to to go through when it's cool. It needs to be hot before it starts to bypass or go through the radiator. Um, this is a racing uh, alternator on it. Obviously, it's got a aluminium uh, radiator as well. And so far, so good. Touch wood. It's been it's been okay. This is a. Uh, the dizzy in this is has been specially made uh, was specially put together by a company that that deals just with dizzies they, they, they I can't remember what the name is now but I'll, if you ask me I'll, I'll find it uh, yeah so that's that's basically the way it's set up and you might see in here that we have these holes through the the main bolts and this is to put the uh, hex bar, I've got a hex bar that's about one and a half feet long that goes down in there to adjust same on that side to adjust those so in here we've got LED lighting and that's only if on the morning of the race it's a bit foggy and we need to have them to actually go racing and in the back here is a is a rain light and they'll come on together. This is, this does nothing. There's, there's nothing in it. It's solid. It's just. And then in the boot, there is a aluminium race tank, but it's very big. So it's really too big for what we need. But I got it cheap. So. And then 
lastly inside you've got so the, the car is the car is obviously steel it's not it's not uh, fiberglass the only thing is fiberglass is the arches the front is carbon fiber so is the bonnet and the boot is fiberglass too obviously all the windows are perspex or um, uh, really cool it'll come to me and then inside obviously we've got a Sparco race seat with a six point harness on it this one down here is to adjust the rear and back brakes the amount of pressure that goes to the front or the back and again what I was talking about underneath you can see this is a standard gearbox but that would normally be underneath and what we've done is use this universal joint and the one on the front so we could put it on top and it gives a very quick shift change in here uh, this uh, pedal box came from Car Builder Solutions which had to be adapted quite somewhat because it didn't fit quite right um, and you can see the way we've built the steering there's a UJ there, one there down onto it also uh, there's adjustable for the pedals there you can see you can adjust left and right so there's a one for the one master cylinder for the rear and one for the front and you can adjust the bias on it left and right you can also move this pedal box in and out but we've got it at the point now where it's fine this is the shift light which we've got to check on and that's really it a few instruments and main racing mirror up there and uh, yeah that's really about it and then there's a battery there in the corner fire extinguisher really not a lot to it so so after the spanner and up, one of the jobs I want to do is I'm going to take these vents back off because I want to put nylocks on, on you see the bolts coming through there, they're a bit long but they're not touching anything but I'm going to put nylocks on there so the vibration doesn't allow them to come loose and I'll take these screens out and the one there on the top and I'll paint it, I've got some orange paint for it here, yeah, it's just off the shelf stuff because that's the colour of the that we use, so it's as near as damn it. That's pretty spot on. So there we go. This is a few um, stickers that I got from the uh, tyre people who get the tyres ready. So I'll probably put a few of them on. Tyres spelled T I R E S. Oh, it's American. Should be T Y, but never mind. So I'll show you what it looks like once we've got them back. Well, there's the new Nankings on there. I just need to check what the tire pressure should be for track use. And there the yoga harms, you can see there's quite a bit more tread on them in comparison to them. It looks like there isn't it, I'll tell you there's a lot more. Yeah. So they should be a lot better. But, and they're mediums apparently. But I, I'll have to find out exactly what the temperature should be on them. Oh, not the temperature, but the pressure. And then once they're, once they're hot. So. Once we've got the spanner in up done, I'll put them on. A little uh, tab I made up here, that's a, that's what we locked out. So something we used to use on the rigs a lot for lockouts, on, uh, we used to put padlocks and things, or two or three padlocks, so it had to go through a uh, hot work permit system. It just saves you. So, because what I've done here, you know, locked out, so it's actually not sitting on the hydraulics. One, it saves the hydraulics a bit, and two, if it, something goes wrong, it can't drop onto the car because we'll put the car underneath a bit more for the night and then work on it in the morning. <laughs>